Hello and welcome to They Think It's All Over. With David and Lee this week, a boxer who can lay claim to being the luckiest man in Europe. He gets paid for hitting Chris Eubank. <laughs> World super middleweight champion Steve Collins. <laughs> On Gary and Rory's team is a comedian and former county tennis champ who's a big supporter of non-league football. Well, he will be next year. He's a Brighton fan. <laughs> Tony Hawks. Right, we start off with our goal celebrations round. We play each team a goal being scored and then celebrated. We'd like to know what story lies behind the choreographed routine. David Lee and Steve, it's FA Cup action for you. As Sunderland's Michael Gray hilariously sticks one in against Arsenal. Trying to tee it up for Gray. Yes, good strike. Michael Gray equalises for Sunderland. And they go into what presumably is a well-rehearsed little routine. So, what do we think all that business was about? Christ knows. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just have no idea. <laughs> I thought that was a good answer. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was a very good answer, actually. Yeah. That's mine. He stole it off my sheet. <laughs> I didn't make it right. Oh, no. <laughs> 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 I thought I heard something over there, that's all. <laughs> I hope next time you start running, you keep running, because I'm going to come after you. Well, <laughs> well, I was just about to say, normally at this point in the show, I take the piss out of our teammate. Yeah. <clears throat> but this week, I think I'll give it a miss. <laughs> <laughs> you know when you're going for a fight, right? Just before you're going, Steve, they put a bit of mass... You didn't tell me this was going to happen before the show. They were not to the see. They never do. They put a bit of Vaseline here, don't they, before you're going for the fight? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Do you not think that that's a bit of a... Do you not think your manager's sort of letting no, you down but, a bit there? It's not, no, it's where you put the vase in. That's when I let this... Steve, I don't deny you're an attractive this, man. This goes on. <laughs> Can I make a suggestion? We put it to the audience. Who'd like to see Steve Collins shag Lee Hurst? <laughs> <laughs> I've got to put my hand up, because if he wants to, he's got to. <laughs> So what was all this question, business about? Yeah, yeah I think I think the reason they were doing that, right, is because you can get sent off if you do that. <laughs> Are they all masons? <laughs> <laughs> Are they just saying to the ref, yeah. "Go on, let it stay, <laughs> leave it in"? Leave it in. <laughs> he was going to disallow it, and I went like that, and he went, "Oh." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I tell you why they've done it. They never, they're never on television, right? That goal will never be shown on television. But they said, "Let's pull a stroke. Let's do something different." And we'll be on, they think it's all over. Yeah. What's the whole idea? Oh. It's a fun... That, am I getting there? Am I hitting up? Not really, Not, Steve. Oh. <laughs> it's still <laughs> lovely to have you here. <laughs> Steve, Steve, charming I... Irish brogan, yeah. <laughs> and some young good looks. <laughs> Steve, I had this... Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to have bad thing jokes. Okay. <laughs> I just want to say, before I came on tonight, I was just handed a little note here. Oh. It says, uh, Dear Lee, I think Steve Collins is a complete wimp. And if I ever met him, I could take him with one hand tied behind my back. <laughs> Signed, Gary Lineker. <laughs> I just thought you should know that, Steve. That's well, what that, I couldn't have Gary, because Gary can't write. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> should we hand this across no, before everybody forgets and loses the will to live? <laughs> Was it a reference to, to Kevin Ball? Something about big nose and lacking a bit on top? I think I'll give you a bonus point for that. Yeah, here's Michael Gray to explain. The reason why we did this is because our captain, Kevin Ball, has got a big nose and a barley head. <laughs> so the Sunderland players were mocking their captain for having a big nose. It's similar to the old Tottenham celebration, isn't it, Gary, when you were playing there, the old... <laughs> <laughs> I used to do. <laughs> Remember that one? <laughs> Which player were they referring to? I've no idea. <laughs> So, Gary, Rory and Tony, another cup classic for you. It's Farnborough mm -hmm. against uh, Barnet. Now it's a hopeful ball forward to Phil Wingfield, who scores! <laughs> so, a goal to the underdogs, but why do you suppose they froze like that? It's something they did in training. Yeah, ecstasy by looks yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's an art. They went to an art gallery on their day off. Oh, as, yeah! As, <laughs> as footballers do, and this is an erotic picture that they saw there, and they're just uh, trying to reenact it. 
<laughs> are you really the meeting or are you just making this up as you go along? <laughs> That's what you stand for that. Are you? Uh, hey, Cody. 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 Kick him in the mouth, the Irish yeah. git. Leave it! <laughs> Come on! We've all had a drink! Uh, <laughs> it's Tony Stagg! Don't <laughs> ruin it! I'll bloody have him, I will. <laughs> you know my ideas? We, we, don't know. we don't know, do no. we? OK, let's hear goal scorer Phil Wingfield explain. Well, we'd all seen Police Squad, and uh, that's got Leslie Nielsen in it, and at the end of that, they all uh, freeze, and you think it's the end of the show, but then someone moves, and it looks pretty good, so uh, we thought we'd do that, because I was going to say something. Yes, what a goal, lovely! <laughs> 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 yeah, so the routine is a tribute to Leslie Nielsen from Police Squad. Funny that, because we thought they'd actually got the idea from the way that Liverpool defend in Europe. <laughs> for their next goal, the lads tried a celebration based on Inspector Morse. It lasted for two hours, and no-one knew what was going on. <laughs> and the bloke who scored the goal actually turned out not to have done it after all. <laughs> Farnborough's in Hampshire. In fact, the ground's just at the bottom of David Gower's garden, about 60 miles from his house. <laughs> At the end of that round, David's team have nil and Gary's team have one. <laughs> right, next up is the injury board, where each captain chooses a number which reveals a famous sporting figure and a thing. What we want to know is how the thing injured the sportsperson and put them out of action. David's lot first. you want to pick a number? Two, uh, please. Number Nick. two for Mr Gower. Right, that's uh... <laughs> <laughs> that's Jimmy White and a bull terrier with one of those slinky things in its neck. As far as I can see. <laughs> so, how was Snooker's permanent runner-up done up like a kipper by his dog? You know, when you drive along, the dog sticks his head out of the window. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what happened. The dog stuck his head out of the window, and they crashed because the dog was driving at the time. Because <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy had lost his license. Jimmy <laughs> lost his license. <laughs> Jimmy was feeling a bit hungry, so we decided to stop into the. Um, the local Korean takeaway, and uh, <laughs> he got the menu, and when he translated the English version of what he's actually eaten. It, it was, was English, English bull terrier. <laughs> oh bloody have you! Are <laughs> oh, you are a comedian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, he outwitted me. <laughs> I'm losing think, all around here. I think what happened was he wasn't actually injured by the dog, he was actually exhausted because he ended up playing snooker for 53 hours non-stop because every time he put his cue down, <laughs> the dog brought it back to him. He saw the dog in the park one day, lifting his leg against a tree to do whatever he does, you know? Yeah. And he says, that's how you do it. So when he, when he was taking his shot and he had one foot up, because one foot must be on the ground, it's in the rules, he tried to well, push the dog. it's also gravity. Excuse so. me. <laughs> <laughs> the last time... <laughs> Mum, we'll come and get me! <laughs> <laughs> we found a way to shut Lee Hurst up. Yes. <laughs> yeah, playing a long shot like that. Right? He cocks one leg up on the table. He thinks to himself, "Good enough for the dog. Good enough for me." <laughs> and the game is abandoned because of a flooded table. <laughs> <laughs> No, yeah. can we give up? <laughs> the story yeah, is that Jimmy White was taking his dog for a quiet walk in the country when it started chasing after a rabbit. Jimmy unwisely clung onto the lead until he inadvertently headbutted a tree. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, it was the first time he clung onto a lead all season. <laughs> Jimmy White, of course, is famous for not being able to read, but we don't care, Jimmy. We think you're a truly great player. <laughs> After that accident, uh, Jimmy White was told he could face horrific facial scarring, but only if he was drawn against Stephen Hendry. <laughs> <laughs> what? So it's Stephen Hendry's good looking, is he? <laughs> Gary's team. Please select a number. Seven. Oh. Okay, that's England's number one uh, there with uh, the Coca Cola cans and a television set. So, how did a TV injure Arsenal's mm. keeper? He's, uh, he's not the first Arsenal player to be caught with a line of coke. Oh. <laughs> Was he watching your programme, holding the baby and sort of split his sides laughing? <laughs> is the correct answer for three points. <laughs> Did he buy the television off one of his Arsenal teammates? 
and he's watching it one night, there was a knock on the door and he tried to flush it down the lavatory. <laughs> <laughs> and how did he get injured? <laughs> well, I don't know. He went with it. He, he tuned into Channel 5 and he injured his fist banging the television because he had a perfect reception. <laughs> I think he was, he had a long-term back injury. He had to spend a lot of time on his back watching telly. I think he strained his back trying to get the remote control to change channels or... I'll give you that, although it was in fact his knee. The reason that David Seaman has been out of the Arsenal team recently is because he twisted his knee ligaments getting up to turn the telly off in a hurry. They were apparently showing Naeem's 100 greatest goals. <laughs> <laughs> the next week he did his other knee. He was watching Crime Watch and jumped up suddenly when he saw his back four doing a building society. <laughs> So, at the end of that round, David's team have nil and Gary's team have four. In this round, we ask the question, what's going on? We play each team some unusual sports-related action and ask them to tell us what it's all about. David, Lynn, Steve, we take you to Turf Moor, home of Burnley FC. But what do you suppose is happening here? Okay, any ideas? It looks suspiciously as though the urinals have packed in again. At <laughs> <laughs> Was Gary Southgate about to take a penalty? <laughs> Steve, any ideas? I reckon they're going to watch the highlights that night and want to see the match live in case they... <laughs> they looked at something on the field they didn't like the look of much. Yep. Was it Vanessa Feltz doing a streak? <laughs> Do they sort of like protesting about something? Yeah. Is it like the management or the directors or something? And they, because this is the way football fans protest, right? Instead of like, you know, just boycotting the game, what they do is they pay them money, turn up, then turn their backs <laughs> on, <laughs> and the director's going, cool, we're likely to cave in under this kind of pressure. <laughs> well, I'll give you three points for that, yeah. In fact, the clip related to an occasion in spring last year when Burnley fans turned their backs in protest after the team had won just one home game in three months. It increased their viewing pleasure so much, they now do it every week. <laughs> Gary, Rory and Tony, uh, crinkly black and white action for you, but what exactly is going on? Was it David Gower's staff on their annual outing? <laughs> <laughs> we, don't, a, we don't get leave. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't like to spoil you, does he? He don't care as long as his shrubberies are all right. <laughs> Bastard. <laughs> That's Mr. Bastard to you. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry. If I had her, I'd chug it. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh sorry. It. There you go. <laughs> A safety thing. Yeah, mm. yeah. I'll give you three points for that. In fact, oh. they were the men who built Wembley Stadium, oh. testing the stadium oh. for. Oh, just give them points. Just you know, make it up. Give what? Because they got the correct answer, and I'd give them points. <laughs> You're complaining. Yeah. Just well, said... go and complain to the jockey club or something. Like that. <laughs> 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 don't, don't, don't sit down. We won't get in the jockey club. The doors are too oh. light. Yes. <laughs> OK, yes, those were, in fact, the original men who built Wembley, testing the stadium for structural faults just before it opened in 1923. Wembley's biggest crowd, incidentally, was in 1982, when a quarter of a million people had tickets to see the Pope. Being Wembley, of course, only 20% of them went to genuine Catholics. <laughs> <laughs> so, at the end of that round, David's team have three and Gary's team have seven. In this round, we see sportsmen doing what they do best, dressing up in stupid clothes for publicity photographs. We want our teams to work out what it is they are trying to plug. David's team first. Have a look at this. <laughs> so that's Will Carling. What is the reason for these enormous feet he has? Is this why Rob Andrew used to take all the kicks? <laughs> <laughs> Carling takes another kick, and the ball's on Mars. <laughs> <laughs> 
is it that you, rugby players, they need big feet like that so they can gain better purchase when they're sticking their ass out the back of the coach window? <laughs> <laughs> I reckon um, Will Curling grew those feet so large because what happened was Wembley Stadium wanted to do a retest. <laughs> <laughs> This is all very good, but it's, it's actually the question the that was in the last round. Yeah. Yeah. For Christ's sake, don't say round to Steve last don't round. Don't ring a bell around. Really. Say last round and he'll go somewhere. So we've got three right? minutes. <laughs> If we, if we score and knock out the last round, doesn't matter what points they have. No, 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 that isn't the way it works, no. no. But, but don't Go let on. it stop you trying. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the devil in him today, Mr Gower, hasn't he? <laughs> what will Natalie say? <laughs> I'll see you in bed. <laughs> Waiting for <Is> you. It... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry! Thank you. Isn't sort of security device for when he visits Kensington Palace? Oh. Certainly hear him coming, that's for sure. <laughs> Didn't yeah, someone no. hear him coming there before? Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Are we going to hand this across? Not worth it. It no, 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 we, we're not finished yet. You gave them time. Give us a bit of time, OK? Uh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> OK? Steve? Uh, Steve, you know... I, I think I know the answer. <laughs> Steve, you know... You know what's your point? Just want to say, Steve, uh, when you had your back turned, Nick. <laughs> no, Nick yeah. wouldn't do that. <laughs> Mind you, that weren't the half of it. it. <laughs> that weren't the half of it. Lineker was calling you a prat over there. <laughs> Come, Come on, I've met Gary that... before, you know. You've met Gary before? Yeah, many years ago. Where? In Ireland. He, he wouldn't talk to me then. Are you trying to tell me you went up to him and he blanked you? Yeah, totally blanked me, yeah. I'm hard, isn't I? Known <laughs> <laughs> for it. Can we? Well, hard. <laughs> Two oh, tips, sorry. right? He cuts easy, right? <laughs> he cuts easy. Go for the toe. Go for the toe. <laughs> Please go. For the toe. I'd, uh, I'd just like to say, if Gary's well hard, I don't know whether I want to sit next to him. Anyway. <laughs> Is it proving that your feet do swell up on a long haul flight? <laughs> I'm going to um, try to attract Fergie. <laughs> 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 the answer is that Will Carling was trying to raise awareness of the perils of athlete's foot. Incidentally, Will Carling's company, and this is true, was awarded a £20,000 contract this week to put the England cricket team through a weekend morale building course. A spokesman told the Mail on Sunday that the England team, this is an absolute quote, will be carrying out physically and mentally demanding tasks. For instance, and this should be a real challenge, I quote, the cricketers will attend a formal dinner at which... <laughs> which they must stay sober. <laughs> Gary Side now, see if you can recognise the pair in this photograph. <laughs> so why exactly did the blonde bimbo cut Anthea Turner's hair? It's nice to be blonde again, anyway. <laughs> Are they promoting here eye drops for mad staring eyes? <laughs> It's don't sit on a traffic cone, will you? <laughs> <laughs> it's head of the year, and... Uh, Sorry? It's, well, Anthea gave... <laughs> She's facing the wrong way. It must be Burnley head of the... Never mind. <laughs> it looks like typical Gower to me. Another badly judged cut. <laughs> I can't really hand it across, you got it close enough. Damn. The astonishing answer <laughs> is that David Gower and Anthea Turner were named Best Haircuts of 1995 <laughs> by the National Hairdressers Federation. <laughs> uh, yeah. It was, in fact, a unanimous decision by the celebrity jury of Ray Charles, Stevie Wonder and David <laughs> Blunkett. <laughs> Although, apparently, David Blunkett's dog was seen frantically going... <laughs> <laughs> Mr Gower wasn't actually able to attend the award ceremony, but thanks to DHL, his hair was. <laughs> so, at the end of that round, David's team have three and Gary's team have ten. <laughs> There's more pathetic fumblings in this next round as we play Field the Sportsman. Gary and Rory, you're first. You have 90 <laughs> seconds to identify mystery guest using something. only your fingers. Can't see. Okay, can we have our first mystery guest, please? Mm -hmm. 
OK, your 90 seconds start now. How many are there? Go. Oh, that's, that's, that's you. That's me. <laughs> One. Is it the referendum party? <laughs> it's got, it's got asbestos pyjamas on. <laughs> Somebody sleeps in a boiler. Oh! Oh, it's... Uh, Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Where are you? It's my ex... <laughs> it's my ex-wife! <laughs> <laughs> I will pay the maintenance, I promise. <laughs> or is it Fatima Whitbread? Oh! <laughs> so can. Very physical. Oh dear. Reminds me of writing with Frankie Howard, this. Is it judo? Judo? What's that? Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Blimey, his heart's beating fast. <laughs> Not wearing a bra. <laughs> <laughs> mm. It is my ex-wife. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? Judo? You got a round of applause for Judo? Brian Jacks. Uh, Say that louder. It's mm -mm. not, clearly not. <laughs> Rina Swatman. Um, no. It's definitely not Elvis, is it? Name some judo players. Uh, judo uh, players? <laughs> Neil Adams. It's a isn't it? Nick. Uh, Ooh! Did he say it? I said it. He said it. I'll give that. I did actually just hear it. He did say it. Right. <laughs> 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 I did just go. Mm. Lee and David, if you'd like to go and take your positions. Mm. <laughs> OK, blindfolds on. Can we have our second mystery guest, please? Can I just give him a hint? No, don't, don't judge on the smell. No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> um, one person says Fatima, never mind. <laughs> I didn't say a name, so I'm not in trouble. <laughs> right, your 90 seconds start now. <laughs> <laughs> Is it Linford Christie? <laughs> What are you talking about? Oh. Oh, oh, no. Oh, dear. Oh. Oh. oh, dear. Blimey, son. It might be long, but it's a bit thin. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh. okay, right. another minute to go. Is a oh. guy who's used the toilets in a pub once too often? <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. So, Hang on, I've got it, Dave. He's a bloke who spends a lot of time very close to the net. Is it Gary? <laughs> <laughs> He's obviously into catching things. Ooh, waders, so... Uh, waders, this is kinky. Waders. This is kinky. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't... <laughs> that might be kinky, sir. I don't know what you get up to when I knock off at the end of the day. <laughs> you and your party, sir. I'll have, I'll have the mate, <laughs> don't worry. You and the MPs. Um, <laughs> sorry, I don't think it's about crap sport, have you? Do we have to guess the name of the fish? <laughs> <laughs> How, how tough is it? Out, it's it's um, got to be a, fish, a, a fishing oh, person. Well, it's, it's not Jack Charlton, is it? Half <laughs> oh, a minute. Good heavens. Five seconds. One of my mates are like both of Atherton or Bob. Famous fisherman. Can I just ask? Are you, are you a master oh, baiter? Yes. Yeah. Give him It's been a pleasure playing alongside <laughs> you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I can't believe you shook me hands. At the end of that round, David's team have six and Gary's team have 13. <laughs> Our final round is the mind-expanding Wembley testing name game. The winning team goes first, which is Gary's team at the moment. So, uh, Rory, you're going to read out the clues. As many names as you can manage in the next 90 seconds. And your time starts now. <laughs> uh, tennis player, very attractive, 16-year-old. You like her. 
Uh, Hingis. Swiss, that's right. Martin, yeah. First name, yeah. Martina, Martina Hingis. Um, goalkeeper, that's Liverpool. Don't be name. 400 metres hurdle. You'd fancy her. Nice looking girl. Sally uh, Gunner. Yeah, that's it. Well, that's <laughs> it. Uh, Southampton player. I think he's Matthew Dutch. Matthew No, he's uh, Dutch, but he could, could be from Turkey, judging by his, you know. Uh, Van der Goebel. Gobble. Go gobble, yeah. Gobble. <laughs> um, I first think name. Chest, yeah, first name. Oh, Hans. Correct. No, first name, come on. Is it not Hans? Same as um, Ulrich van Wassenhausen. <laughs> I'll give you that. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. This is a badminton player whose name translates, I think, as special fried rice or something like that. <laughs> First name, same as the second name. Oh, Yang Yang. Very good, yeah. Oh, right. uh, <laughs> a, a similar Similar, bloke, uh, similar, similar. <laughs> further down on the menu, number 33, this one. Oh, it's the other one. Y Yang Ying. Yang Ying. Yang Ying. Yeah, Yang Ying. Table tennis player. Should be called Ping Pong. <laughs> this bloke's a rugby player. I think he's Western Samoan. His first name is not Senior. It's... Junior. 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 Five seconds. Well, I think you jump out on an aeroplane with these on your back. Parachute. Junior parachute's close enough. <laughs> Right, I'm going to take one point away for Junior Parachute, oh. which is to 19, and I don't think I can give you the Ulrich same first name as Ulrich von so and so. So you go down to 18, please, on Gary's team. OK, Lee, you need 12 to draw level. Oh, well, I guess. 12? <laughs> and your 90 minutes. seconds start now. <laughs> Golfer, uh, if you met him in the forest, you'd be quite scared, and he's just won something. Oh, yeah, Tiger Little. Uh, Tiger once. Little. Yeah, yeah that'll do, Steve. <laughs> Steve, Steve, whatever you say works. <laughs> uh, footballer, Southampton. Uh, he's got a first name, very English, second name, very French. Mathematician. Yeah. Correct. Uh, cricketing bloke. Uh, uh, I'll see the. Uh, <laughs> uh, this big, rough uh, bloke. Retro. Correct. I'm oh, brilliant at this, aren't I? Right. Oh, this <laughs> skier. British skier. Come on, how many have we got? Bell. Correct. <laughs> no. I, took I took a liberty. You took a liberty. You can do that, sir. You, you, <laughs> if you want to take liberty, sir, you do. Just tell me. It's your own time you're wasting. <laughs> Another golfer, Scottish. Uh, his first name is. Um, Sam Torrance. Cor well, that's his second name as well. <laughs> uh, this one. Surname's like something fruit pastels. Something fruit Round pastels. Tree. And the first name oh, is. What is. is um, um, Blackcurrant. Two <laughs> seconds. <laughs> <laughs> David's team have 11, but this week's winners are Gary's team with 18. <laughs> So, thanks to David Lee and Steve, Gary, Rory and Tony. We're all off to avoid the marathon runners we sponsored. I'm Nick Hancock. They think it's all over. It is now. Premiership action next on BBC One between Everton and Liverpool in Sports Night.